Namaskar. We are going to deal with the topic silk dyeing and printing. Silk has great affinity for dyes and its dyeing methods are analogous to those of wool. All the dyes natural and synthetic can be used on silk though in recent years natural dyes except for long wood black have been completely abandoned. The choice of dye usually depends upon the end use in view. Thus basic or acid dyes are used with the extra brightness and less color fastness are required for the all the ribbons, linings and evening wave. For silk embroidery yarns where color fastness is important, modern dyes, wire dyes and azoic dyes are used. Silk furnishings or dyed vegetable dyes, bark dyes are still used to lend traditional coloring and standard black is used even today in preference to any synthetic dye stuff. There are many classes of synthetic dye stuffs which are used by the modern silk industry. The main ones are acid dyes which are cheap and give a wide range of fast use and shades, direct dyes which also lend good fastness properties, reactive dyes which produce equally bright shades on silk, wad dyes prepared on the wads, so comes the name, modern dyes and azoic dyes used for selected purposes. The silk industry makes extensive use of acid dyes and reactive dyes and modern dyeing methods help produce very bright and fast colors. When acid dyes are used, dyeing starts at 40 degrees to 50 degrees centigrade. The temperature is gradually raised to 85 degrees centigrade in about 45 minutes and maintained at temperature for that period. After dyeing, the silk is rinsed and washed in water made slightly acidic with acetic and formic acid. A fresh dyeing with basic dyes has the effect of giving deeper and richer shades. Before dyeing by the reactive dyes, it is necessary to decom the silk thoroughly to remove sericin. There are two methods by which reactive dyes can be applied to silk, alkaline method and acid method. Silk can be dyed in alkaline bath at 20 to 25 degrees centigrade for cold types of reactive dyes and 70 to 90 degrees centigrade for hot dyeing reactive dyes. Silk is dyed at 85 degrees centigrade in acid bath. Alkaline dyeing method. The dye is diluted with warm water at 30 to 50 degrees centigrade. Silk is then treated in a dye bath containing alkali free common salt, more salt amounting to four times the weight of silk is gradually added in the first half hour and then an appropriate amount of soda ash solution, one by fifth of the weight of the goods is added in stages over the next 20 minutes. Dyeing is carried out for a further period of 30 minutes. The goods are finally washed in a soap solution containing a small amount of common salt and soda ash. As a dyeing method, the materials are soaked in a dye bath containing 3 to 4 percent formic acid. After dyeing, the materials are rinsed and soaked as in the alkaline method. Before these synthetic dyes became popular, the use of vegetable dyes demanded great individual care of silk and silk dyeing was considered a delicate job in ancient times. In Japan, two ancient dyeing methods were kokechi dyeing with uncolored spots and yuzenzom dyeing and painting method. 
the former method which is still followed to keep up the radiation consists of tying various sections of cloth before dyeing, producing various designs in dyed and undyed cloth. A similar method known as Sujigahana produces a large undyed pattern which is subsequently hand painted. The other famous method is called as Yuzen Zom, named after a famous fan painter Yuzen Sai Miyazaki. The concept became so popular that today is a stand of any high quality dyed fabric. All dyed or printed kimono fabrics are usually Yuzen Zom in modern Japan. Yuzom dyeing technique has substantially changed from the olden days when vegetable dyes were used. This method as practiced today can be described like this. A rough pattern is drawn on the cloth and line are traced neatly by using a color paste made of glutinous rice flour and bran. Then a soya bean liquid is daubed onto the pattern and dyes are applied. The cloth is steamed to set the color permanently. This is followed by another application of rice paste and the ground color is dabbed with green juice and dried. The fabric is again steamed and washed. The fabric is then embellished with gold work or embroidery. In modern Japan, Kyoto is the home of silk dyeing and printing and skilled craftsmen produce silk handicrafts of superb traditional charm. The yarn pattern is also printed by the silk screen printing process and is today successfully applied to man-made textiles also. China has in recent years modernized its printing and dyeing units with introduction of latest machinery from West Germany, Italy, Switzerland and Holland. Hangzhou plant, one of the biggest in China, processes 1.8 million square meter of silk fabric on advanced line for scouring, dyeing, printing, finishing. A compound cure for continuous scouring over flow jet dyeing machines process white with fabrics. For printing, automatic and semi-automatic flow process line is adopted. Imported machines also handle steaming, washing, shink proof treatment and drain batch transportation. China has developed on Italian line crease resistant finish for some of its high priced silk and is trying to endo wash and wear finishes to silks. Chinese claim that silk fabrics treated with shrink proof and crease resistant finishes do not shrink easily. Shrinkage percentage is reduced to 3%. China has also refined the traditional yarn and piece dyeing process by combining old methods with new method of dyeing practices. A typical Chinese dyeing factory, say one based at Shuzhou, a leading silk producing center, undertakes degumming, dyeing, finishing, and pacing of silk fabrics. Another factory at Shuzhou specializes in scouring of silks by the traditional method of repeated scouring, washing, rinsing, and drying. The operation lasts for about six hours. Crepe de Chine fabrics are strip dyed and hand dyed to obtain a black color. India has a rich heritage of natural dye stuffs. These dyes are derived from a wide variety of plants like indigo, turmeric, madar, kusum, sapan wood and jack wood. India has from the earliest times developed a sophisticated sense of color. In fact, just as each season and mood are expressed in Indian music, so are the colors 
the light or dark hue makes a vital difference. Spring is depicted by the color green and summer by saffron. Black is the color of sorrow, red and yellow are for rejoicing. Among silk textiles, there are three main traditional color works seen in India. Number one, the tie and dye process. Number two, the block printing and C, hand painting. The ancient tie and dye process practiced in Gujarat and Rajasthan states is still very popular. The fabric is first folded several times, dampened and pressed over a piece of string which is carried from one point to another. The cloth is now dyed in the lightest color. The whole process continues until the darkest shade is reached. The pattern is set by small dots of different colors and the lively designs are visualized through imaginative use of dots. The Patola silk sari of Gujarat is another variation of the tie and dye process. The warp and weft threads are separately tied by the tie and dye process with great precision and dexterity. There are three types of Patola silks. Kambay type, Patan type and Surat style, each carrying the local color scheme. The Kambay pattern carries a maroon background with predominant colors of three flowers with green stems. The Patan Patola has broad stripes containing the elephant, flower, human figure and bird motifs. The border is not separate but measures from the main body of the sari fabric. The Surat Patola is the clever diffusion of colors. In the original batik work, now replaced by block printing, the fabric is immersed in a cow dung solution and then soaked in a filter decoction of myrobalan powder, water and milk. The wax is then coated on the portions which are to be remain uncolored. The wax coated cloth is then dipped in a solution of tantipa seeds, indigo, lime and soda. The color is then painted with a brush. In the block printing method which has now replaced the elaborated batik and gray blocks are made of wood. The printer presses the block against the color paste and imprints the design on the fabric. Pure silks like other natural fabrics can be printed in different ways by direct printing or roller printing, discharge printing and resist printing, hand block printing, duplex printing, flock and screen printing too. Silk crepes and other plain silks are printed by roller printing. Silk is also an ideal material for two color discharge printing. Silk batik printing is done through a process of resis printing. But the most common and exclusive ancient method is the hand block printing of silk fabrics practiced in almost all the silk producing Asian countries. The other universal modern method is screen printing on silk fabrics. Now let us see the printing process. Applying colored patterns and design to decorate a finished fabric is called printing. In a proper printing fabric, a color is affixed to the fiber so that it may not be affected by washing and friction. Whether a fabric is dyed or printed, can be known by examining the outline of the design. On a printed fabric, the outline of a design is sharply divided on the outer side. The design generally do not penetrate to the back of the cloth. However, the design may show up on the reverse side of transparently thin fabrics. These fabrics may be confused with the oven designs where 
yarn dyed warp and filling are used. If the design is printed on such a fabric, the yarns will show some areas on which color is not equally distributed. The dyes used for printing mostly include watt, reactive, naphthol and dispersed colors which have good fastness properties. The pigments which are not truly dyes are also used extensively for printing. These colors are fixed to the fiber through resins that are very resistant to laundering or dry cleaning. Pigments are among the fastest known colors and are effective for light to medium shades. If used for applying dark colors, they may crock or rub off. Improved resins, better pigments or more effective anti-crock agents must be used to solve this problem. Cheap prints are made from basic colors mixed with tartar, emetic and tannic acid but they are not acceptable in today's market. For cotton printing, watt and reactive dyes are generally used. Silk is usually printed with acid colors. Wool is printed with acid or chrome dyes. But before printing, it is treated with chlorine to make it more receptive to colors. Man-made fibers are generally printed with disperse and cationic dyes. I will see the methods of printing. Three different approaches or techniques are prevalent for printing color on fabric. They are direct, discharge and resist printing methods. Direct printing. It is the most common approach to apply a color pattern on fabric. It can be done on white or a colored fabric. If done on colored fabric, it is known as overprinting. The desired pattern is produced by imprinting the dye on the fabric in a paste form. To prepare the printing paste, a thickening agent is added to a limited amount of water and the dye is dissolved in it. Earlier cornstarch was preferred as a thickening agent for cotton printing. Nowadays, gums or alginates derived from seaweed are preferred because they are easier to wash out and do not themselves absorb any color and allow better penetration of the color. Most pigment printing is done without thickeners as a mixing up of resins, solvents and water itself producing thickening. Discharge printing. In this approach, the fabric is dyed in piece and then it is printed with a chemical that destroys the color in the design areas. Sometimes the base color is removed and another color is printed in its place. The printed fabric is steamed and then thoroughly washed. This approach is on decline these days. Resist printing. In this technique, a resist paste is imprinted on the fabric and then it is dyed. The dye affects only those parts that are not covered by the resist piece. After dyeing, the resist paste is removed, leaving a pattern on a dark background. There are various methods of printing in which one of the above three techniques is used. Block printing, roller printing, duplex printing, stencil printing, screen printing, transfer printing, blotch printing, jet spray and electrostatic printing, photo printing, differential warp printing and batik printing. Also tie dyeing, airbrush painting and digital printing too. Block printing. The designs are carved on a wooden or a metal block and the paste dye stuff is applied to the design on the face of the block. The block is pressed down firmly by hand on the surface of the fabric. Roller printing. In this machine, counterpart of the block printing, engraved copper cylinders or rollers are used in place of hand curved blocks. With each revolution of the roller, a repeat of the design is printed. 
printed cloth is passed to a drying and then a steaming chamber where the moisture and heat sets the dye. Duplex printing. Printing is done on both sides of the fabric either through roller printing machine in two operations or a duplex printing machine and a single operation. Screen printing. It is done either with a flat or cylindrical screens made of silk threads, nylon, polyester, vineyard or metal. The printing paste or dye is poured on the screen and forced through its unblocked areas onto the fabric. Based on the type of the screen used, it is known as flat screen printing or rotary screen printing. Stencils printing. The design is first cut in cardboard, wood or metal. The stencil may have fine delicate designs or large spaces through which color is applied on the fabric. Its use is limited due to high costs involved. Transfer printing. The design on a paper is transferred to a fabric by vaporization. There are two main processes for this, dry heat transfer printing and wet heat transfer printing. In conventional heat transfer printing, an electrically heated cylinder is used that presses a fabric against a printed paper placed on a heat resistant blanket. In infrared heat vacuum transfer printing, the transfer paper and the fabric are passed between the infrared heaters and the perforated cylinders which are protected from excessive heat by a shield. The wet heat transfer printing uses heat in a wet atmosphere for vaporizing the dry pattern from paper to the fabric. Blush printing. It is a direct printing technique where the background color and the design are both printed onto a white fabric usually in a one operation. Any of the methods like block, roller or screen may be used. Airbrush or spray painting. Designs may be hand painted on fabric or the dye may be applied with a mechanized airbrush which blows or sprays color on the fabric. Electrostatic printing. A dye resin mixture is spread on a screen bearing the design and the fabric is passed into an electrostatic field under the screen. The dye resin mixture is pulled by the electrostatic field through the pattern area onto the fabric. Photo printing. The fabric is coated with a chemical that is sensitive to light and then any photograph may be printed on it. Differential printing. It is a technique of printing tufted material made of yarns having different dyeing properties such as carpets. Up to a 10 color effect is possible by careful selection of yarns, dye stuffs and pattern. Warp printing. It is a roller printing applied to warp yarns before they are woven onto the fabric. The dyeing. Firm knots are tied to the cloth before it is immersed in a dye. The outside of the immersed portion is dyed but the inside is not penetrated. There are various forms of tie dyeing like the dyeing where bundles of warp and the weft yarns are tie dyed prior to their weaving. In Plangi dyeing, the gathered, folded and rolled fabric is usually held with stitching to form specific pattern. Batik dyeing. It is a resistant dyeing process. Designs are made with a wax on a fabric which is then immersed in a dye. The unwaxed portion absorbs the color. Jet spray printing. Designs are imported to fabrics by spraying colors in a controlled manner through nozzles. Digital printing. In this form of printing, micro-sized droplets of dye are placed onto the fabric 
through an inkjet print head. The print system software interprets the data supplied by an academic textile design image file. The digital image file has the data to control the droplet output so that the image quality and the color control may be achieved. This is the latest development in textile printing and is expanding very fast in digital textile printing era. India possesses a well defined motifs from earliest days obvious from the trefoil pattern which appeared in famous bust of beard man of Mohenjadaro 3000 BC. The paisley motif called Khalka in India also seems to have originated in India and even today dominates the designing field in Europe and America. The popular Indian motifs are paisley, trefoil, and birds, animals, natural objects, and geometrical patterns like stripes, circles, dots, squares, and triangles. The design pattern also conveys with accuracy a social ceremony or a natural landscape or even visualizes the exploits of a hero. The use of gold and silk thread is very common and the kin carbs oven flowers are masterpieces in design and craftsmanship.